let's talk about iron beam literally right now as we're speaking the israeli ministry of defense rafael and elbit have just announced that the iron beam defense system laser star wars blue and white system is operational and is right now as we're speaking defending israel so without further ado let's watch the video and talk about it iron beam high power laser weapon system By the way, it's named after the warrior Oretan, part of the special unit Egoz that died in Lebanon and they named the system after him. Oretan, Eitan's Light. Laser system ready. Three, Three two, two, one. one. <laughs> Look at that, amazing, Star Wars. I mean, that's, that's the, the bad guys. This is, this is the part that is amazing. Laser interception in progress. Successfully intercepted. Target successfully intercepted. Target Literally. Launched. Target launched. <laughs> Star Wars. Modern day lasers that are used as weapons for defense. But it's it's taking down missiles and drones. Target engaged. It's crazy. Laser interception in progress. That's what I love about Israel. Israel is living in the future. Their enemies are still, you know, funking goats. So I said funking. Don't, don't, don't cut me down, YouTube. F U N K I N G. Iron Beam, high power laser weapon system. Iron Beam. High Power Laser Weapon System. What a cool name. Iron Beam is an Israeli brand new laser defense system built by Rafael and Elbit. It shoots down rockets, missiles, mortars. We're talking, you could probably shoot a grenade if you throw it, if you're calibrated for that. But that's how accurate it is. And it takes them all at the speed of light. After the final test, it is set to enter the service by the end of 2025. They actually said that it already entered in service, but let's see. To understand how powerful it is, let's just compare it to something that most of us have in our households. Think about the laser pointer that you might be using to drive your cat crazy. It's about one thousandth of a watt. Think about a flashlight that you use just to kind of flash around your backyard. It's about five to ten watts. Iron Beam is one hundred thousand watts, making it tens of millions of times stronger than your average laser pointer. Just to get the idea, tens of millions times stronger than that laser that you might point to and drive your cat crazy. It's way, way stronger than that. That's like harnessing the power of a car engine and turning it into a laser cannon. We're talking about Death Star laser cannons right now, mini ones, that can shoot down flying objects. And this is, isn't just raw power. Iron Beam can hit targets from a few hundred meters up to several kilometers away. In clear skies, some tests showed up to around seven kilometers. But that was just in a perfect setup. Perfect day, perfect clear sky, everything was perfect, up to seven kilometers. That's what at least, you know, they're saying in the internet. But it is affected by fog, by smoke, by cloudy weather, by dust and other debris that might be in the air. It can affect it because after all, it is a laser beam. Oh, and just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the like, share, subscribe, help this channel keep growing. And if you want to find a direct way to support my work, go and check my Patreon. Now, why does it matter? Compared to the Iron Dome or David Sling, where their missiles will cost about fifty dollars to $100,000 per one missile. Or if you go to the Aero system, that's about $3 million per one shot. We're talking about several dollars of just turning the lights on and off, basically in that level. Now, of course, you have other expenses of the entire system and supporting and et cetera, et cetera. But once it's stationed, once it's there, this is a game changer in terms of the economy of war and the effectiveness of war and also the collateral damage that you have, everything around it. You know, you don't have any more your rocket exploding and then exploding other rocket, you have more debris. Also the, ch the safety chance of one of your missiles that missed the target and goes and hits and falls somewhere else is kind of eliminated. So in many, many aspects, this is very economical, much more safer and might actually be much more effective, at least in the long run. We're talking right now as a prototype, it just came out, it's working. And these things, as we know, that's how technology moves. The moment that we have something, usually there's quite a lot of breakthroughs that you can do in order to improve it and improve it. And we're talking right now about laser wars in the moon. I don't know what. 
we are one step closer to Star Wars. That's what I'm trying to say here. Anyway, let's continue. So the iron beam doesn't replace the iron dome. That's very important to understand. It actually serves as one layer under. So the whole layer of defense of Israel when it comes to missiles. You have the Chetz, the arrow, that will go and take some rockets outside in the atmosphere, you know, or far away from Israel. A nuclear missile that is launched on Israel. Then you have the David Sling and the Iron Dome, which both can take long to short range missiles that are coming to threat Israel. And then you're gonna have the Iron Beam, because it can't operate as far, and it's kind of like a last resort of defense and often they might even choose to use it if it's a target that they know that they can take down easily like a drone flying over the desert you don't need to launch a chetz a three million dollar missile at it you just can wait for him and then tss, laser him just like these mosquitoes you have this laser that kills mosquitoes tss, 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 kind of like that so it's quite quite impressive and very effective. In comparison with other systems that already exist, the US Army has a prototype laser on army vehicles that are about 50 kilowatts, half the power still in testing. The UK Dragonfire laser is just test fired and won't be on ships until 2027. Israel is the first country to actually be in field trying right now a proper modern day futuristic laser weapon, 100 kilowatts. The only one right now that is doing it Rafael is the first and only company in the world to bring high energy laser technology to full operational maturity, successfully intercepting rockets and UAVs. We are extremely proud of Rafael's achievement in this historical breakthrough. The complex trail we conclude today proves, once again, that the gifted scientists and engineers who brought to the world the amazing Iron Dome defense system are doing it again, this time with a laser dome. Raphael's laser dome, which is based on a unique adaptive optics, will undoubtedly serve as a game changer with an unprecedented impact on the future battlefield. And to wrap it up, so in short, Iron Bean gives Israel a cheap near infinite magazine against rockets and drones. It won't replace missiles, but it makes mass attacks far more expensive for the enemy and it saves Israel millions of dollars interceptors for when they really need it. In summarize, we're talking about futuristic laser cannon weapon that can take down missiles, rockets, drones, artillery. It's, it's quite remarkable how capable and advanced the system is and the most interesting thing i would say is where is it going to be in the future we already know that in israel there they have several versions of that iron beam that is going to be stationary or mobile on a truck some of them will be on ships and some of them in the air so it's quite cool and exciting to see where is this gonna go in terms of the deployment and it's also in terms of how is it gonna look like in a year or two from now because let's be honest if you remember your old Nokia phone you know that's big big thing the brick basically and look at today you know it gets smaller 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 then we got flat phones touch screens and now we have like the power of the you the power of the, the power of the universe in the palm of your hand so we see technology have the tendency when it's something that works and the government will want it when, when, they, when there is clients for it then and it tends to improve fast and fast and fast. And what else is a better client than the economy of defense, the economy of war? Let's just face it, because that is real life and death survival matters for many cultures, many nations. So I do anticipate that this is gonna be a breakthrough and that we're gonna start seeing more and more stuff. We're talking about, I mean, this is crazy, guys. We're talking about futuristic space laser battles. I mean, imagine in the future when government will start placing their AI servers on the moon and then you're gonna have to protect your servers because the Chinese want to come and steal, the Russians want to come and steal, and they're going to have some suicide drones flying in the space. It's not drones anymore, I guess. It's suicide unmanned spaceships. But anyway, you're going to start having Star Wars, basically, and you're going to have these Iron Dome's laser systems just going around fighting everything. It's going to become Star Wars. Maybe I'm imagining, but mark my words, I do see this happening one day where people on Earth will start trying to harvest real estate plots in the moon in order for research and they'll just find a good reason to do that and once one nation will start doing that you're gonna have all of them starting doing it well all of them. we're gonna have china russia the us europe maybe israel and other countries that are capable to start doing that because that's going to be a big thing i mean who can claim the moon can someone just can say the moon is ours i think that's unfair 
So I'm pretty sure someone is gonna try to claim the moon and say it's theirs, and then it's gonna ignite an or intergalactic battlefront in space. But either way, guys, I just went a wire here with my nerdiness and my crazy imagination. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, share, hit the like button. If you want to support my work, go and check my channel on Patreon. We can find direct practice ways to support my work. But until then, don't think stupid. And in general, just don't try to drive your cat crazy with a laser beam. And in general, try to spend quality time with your family. That's a good advice. And I'm telling you, time flies just like this. So the more you cash on that quality time with your family, the more you will be happy at an older age. I think that's pretty much a guaranteed thing. I haven't met someone that regretted by the end of his days, oh, I spent too much time with my children. I haven't met a single person who said that. I did meet people who said, you know, I should have probably left my wife a long time ago, but that's a different story for another time. Either way, guys, I'm not recommending divorce here. But either way, guys, stay safe, do nothing stupid, and in general, just don't do anything that I would do. See you next time.